All right, so why is everybody on the internet hating the DJI Osmo Pocket? All right, for me, guys, I'm just going to give it to you straight. I think everybody out there is looking for Sony a7 III quality in something the size of a big lighter with a camera on it as the Osmo Pocket. That's my take on it. That's, <laughs> I mean, you can watch the rest of the video. I hope you do, but... That's pretty much the bottom line on it. People are nitpicking small things on it. Yes, there is room to improve on this camera, but for what this thing is, I mean, look at it. This is it in the case. It's it's freaking tiny, man. I watched a lot of videos and I knew it was small, but until I until I got it and got it in my hand, this thing is just so darn handy. How could you not want to use it? Even the shortcomings of, you know, the audio, the external mic jack, the non-removable battery, the things that people are complaining about. Again, it's not a Sony a7 III. No camera is perfect. If Just like the a7 III, the biggest complaint is there's no articulating screen. It only flips up. I get it. It's tough. A workaround, you put a monitor on it. It seems like every camera company leaves a piece out and somebody else puts another piece on, so you have to pick and choose. I don't think DJI did that with the Osmo. They just made a handy little camera. Yeah, it's not perfect, but this thing is pretty darn awesome, guys. You hold it in your hand. Look at it. You can barely see the camera on top. It's so discreet. If somebody wants to be a vlogger, but they're shy like myself who doesn't want to go out with a big rig in their hand, nobody's going to know what the heck you're holding in your hand. You can barely see this, and somebody might think you're talking on a Bluetooth. So it's very easy to take this out and be comfortable and film. So that's a, that's a key feature for this that people are overlooking. Also, people are talking about the microphone, you know, how you hold it. You have to hold it with two fingers. It's too small. I, I've heard all the complaints. I can hold my whole hand around this and not block either microphone. There's a microphone up front, and there's one down on the bottom, and neither one is blocked with the way I'm holding this, and you can't even see it. So you don't have to hold it all dainty with two or three fingers. And there's just a lot of people out there bashing it for the size of it and uh, the microphones. The mic quality of this isn't bad. I'm going to roll footage in, um, in on a windy day. I did some filming down by the water. It is pretty garbled, but it's usable, I think, in my opinion. And the workaround is you wear a lapel with a dead cat on it. Or you could just put, which, what I'm going to do with this one, I think, is put a little piece of fur over this one particular microphone. I think for a windy day, that'll solve the issues. But if I'm going to want to hike or do something in the woods, I may just mic up with my lapel mic and, and just call it a day. But form factor, this thing is incredible, guys. Will the two have everything that you everybody wants on their wish list? Probably not. Like I said, every camera company leaves some feature out so somebody else could possibly, you know, put a camera out with that feature on it. It's just... It's just competition. It's friendly competition as far as that goes. But this camera, let's let's just talk about all its key features. I mean, it does so much for what you're getting for 350 bucks in a small package. And I was pretty blown away with the image quality on this thing. I mean, I'm shooting in 4K right now on my AX700, and this thing's pretty darn good in low light in the, in the house. I was pretty impressed with it for the sensor size. This is a very tiny sensor. The camera I'm shooting on now has a one inch sensor. That's an AX Sony AX700. And this does pretty well, but in low light, it's, it's not great. And then, of course, the Mac Daddy is the Sony a7 III full frame. This thing, I can film in some pretty darn low light. And this thing gets very good, uh, very good video quality without having any pixelation in it or, or seeing any of that. But the Osmo Pocket, guys, pe why people are hating it, it's just it doesn't have every feature that they want in it. And, and again, you're not going to get that, I don't think, in any camera, unless you're a camera manufacturer and you make your own, which is never going to happen. And again... If they do come out with a second rendition of this, I don't think it's going to have every feature in it either because then the cost would go through the roof. All right, so let's put this into perspective for a minute. Here's the DJI Osmo Pocket. Here's my vape. This thing is, is smaller than my vape. Get it up a little closer. I mean, really taking the size of this thing, it is tiny. Let's show you the front of this. You have no idea how tiny this is until you get it in your hand, guys. It's just so small. And boot up time. We're going to turn this on right now. Push the button. Does its quick little calibration. And this thing's already, it's, it's ready to go. You can see me on camera there. You can see the Sony AX700 I'm filming on now. It's just, it's just so quick, so convenient. It may not look great on this guy, so I have it in manual settings. I was outside filming. But you get the general idea. Power it down, shuts right off, goes back in the case, and uh, 
I, I just think that the best camera to have on you is the one you have on you. And if you have this camera in your pocket, in your bag, you're gonna you're gonna create more content. You, uh, con uh, content. You're gonna film more things. It's just there's no reason not to have one of these for 350. I don't think it's it's a big investment. You don't have to buy crazy. Um, you don't have to buy crazy accessories for it. In my opinion, the only thing you really need is is an adapter, maybe to put it on a tripod if you want to, because it does do the follow, which is very neat, very handy. It's like having your own camera, man. And uh, ND filters. Other than that, like I said, the microphone thing is not a big issue to me because you can just mic up with a lapel mic. If you know you're going to be out filming with this, doing some kind of vlog situation, just wear a lapel mic and mic up that way, and you'll and you'll get the best audio you can. So I think people are crushing this thing on the internet because it's not perfect. It wasn't designed to be perfect at, at, at this price point. That's what people have to bear in mind. And nobody's mentioning that fact. I mean, DJI packed a lot of stuff into this thing for the price that it is. 4K 60, time lapse, panoramic. It, it, it does uh, motion lapse, it, it hyper lapse. It does, it does pretty much everything you can do. All pro settings, do all manual settings except for the aperture. It's a fixed aperture of 2.0. So, I mean, there's really not a lot you can complain about this yet. Everybody's littering the internet saying that this you know it's no good they're gonna wait for the second one i thought about it at first when i first got it i was gonna wait for the second one but you know what when that time comes i'm sure i can still sell this for a couple hundred bucks put in the extra money and get the two is the two gonna be that much better not sure hoping it will be but the future at some point i don't know if i'll ever see it but you'll have a7 III quality in, in a device this big but that, it's not any anytime soon so that's just my take on it guys i'm gonna roll in some footage now of this thing outside just do some walking around stuff like i said i'll do the wind test with it you guys check it out then we'll come back for some final thoughts so again we're outside bright daylight i got this set in manual just to tone it down a little bit i have it on face tracks so we're shooting 4k 30 frames a second and uh we're just doing some walking there's just a walking test i'm by the water where it's breezy so i want to test out this microphone Again, there was big complaints on a mic. Not a big deal in my opinion. I just wear a lav mic and call it a day. But that was an issue. They did resolve it somewhat in the software update, the firmware update for this camera. But the next complaint was is it makes you sound robotic. So we're walking the wind against the camera right now. All right, we got the Osmo in full auto. So you guys can check the exposure again. This is in full auto. Um, outside. It's fairly windy day today. Had my table in the backyard flipped over, so there is wind. Again, I don't think this camera, I mean, I don't think this uh, microphone is unusable. A lot of people bash it, but unless there's really strong wind blowing straight on it, then it'll kind of robotically garble your voice. But again, right now we got a pretty decent breeze going, and uh, I think the audio is acceptable for a run and gun fast situation. Again, if you're going to do something, you know, planned. You can always put a lapel mic on, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, record that way and get pretty good audio. All right, so this is just another outside test. All right, here's some quick video inside. We're inside the house now under normal lighting conditions. I got recessed lighting above. Uh, you know, windows are open. This is normal lighting conditions, so this is what some indoor is going to be like and audio sound indoors, which is, should be much improved over outside. But again, for low light, for a sensor this small, I think it's a pretty good option. All right, so some final thoughts on the DJI Osmo Pocket. I think it's a home run, guys. I think I'm keeping this thing. I think it's a great little device. I'll use this thing more than I, I planned on using it, just because the more and more I do use it, I can see more and more applications for this particular camera. Again, at its price point, for what it is, I think it's getting a bad rap on the internet. That's my opinion only. You guys uh, disagree or have any other thoughts, please leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I think for the price point, what it is and what it does, it's a killer option for somebody who just wants to take something quick, something that takes great video out in the daylight. It's not going to be your best inside and low light. But again, it wasn't designed for that. That's my opinion. You guys want to argue that in the comments. I'd love to hear your, your feedback, what you guys think. Uh, if you guys just stopped by the channel for this particular video, Please consider hitting that subscribe button and we'll see you guys on the next one.